want you to spare time with me on this important story we are about to hear. Now, we're going to watch a little clip from the story, but I'll leave the rest to you. Okay? <clears throat> Give me to drink. How is it that thou, being a Jew, ask a drink of me, who am a woman of Samaria? The Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. If thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that saith to thee, Give me to drink, thou wouldest have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with. And the well is deep. From whence then hast thou that living water? Art thou greater than our father Jacob, who gave us the well, and drank thereof himself, and his children, and his cattle? Whosoever shall drink of this well shall thirst again. But whosoever drinketh of the water which I shall give him shall never thirst. The water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water, springing up into everlasting life. Sir, give me of this water that I thirst not. Neither come hither to draw. Go. Call thy husband and come hither. I have no husband. Thou hast well said. I have no husband. For well, thou hast had five husbands. And he whom thou now hast is not thy husband. In that saidst thou truly. Sir. I perceive that thou art a prophet. Let us pray. Loving God, the Redeemer, the love of our hearts, you gave salvation to all of us. We praise you, give you thanks. Amen. This month, 
In America, we celebrate the importance of the women. This is the Women Month. And this one of the story that everybody would like to hear about it. A story of an unknown woman, no name at all. But I love the way John wrote this story. Because there's no one can know the love of God the Father through his son and his son to all of us. Only John discovered that. And many stories in the Bible, they are pointing fingers, especially the story for the women, they pointing to them, they are the sinners. None in the Bible says tell the man you are sinners. And this is one of the stories. It will never thirsty again. Before the reading this morning, that Jesus, John told that Jesus was about for the first, for the last time, going back from Judea to Galilee. And you knew that, that Jesus never returned back through Samaria, he used what his forefathers used just to going around because Samaria is too dirty for them. Sometime in us, when we hate someone, you see that person walking straight to you, you find a bad way for your life. You pushing away yourself. Instead of going straight to your enemy and says, here I am, and I'm sorry, you finding an excuse to going around. And the more you round, the more you fed away from God. And Jesus took that road. He knew that road because he was a Jewess. But for the first time to him to return back, and make his way to Jerusalem to the cross. The Father make an appointment for him. Jesus, before you go to the cross, I have a woman in Samaria. You must talk to her. In our life, that we are moving anywhere we want and do whatever we want. But all of a sudden, that Jesus had an appointment for you to reach out for those they are hunger and thirsty for Christ to be encountered with them. And this is the story. And Jesus walking through Samaria, the place that impossible for Jews to walk through there. And you knew the story about that. When Israel split, there were 10 tribes moved to the north, and only two in the south, there's Benjamin and Judah. When the Sharia came and captured the 10 tribes, they moved everyone, including people, deported. To a new, to a place they never experienced with their lives, and they send people, it's their enemies, to come and live in their own house. In the marriage, they are half rich. Anything is half full, is not complete, is not perfect. And now Jesus finding his way and come to the world and he was there sitting waiting for the appointment that the father already arranged. A black woman says to come over there.
and he's the story. So he came to a town of Samaria called Sychar, near the block of ground Jacob. Sychar? This town was called before Sychar. And when the Assyria came, and they changed this to Samaria. And because the way they are, we gave him a nickname, a fake name. A name says to mocking them everywhere they go. They call them Sychar. And Jesus was there, sat down by the well. It was about noon. And Jesus came to a town of Samaria. Mixed people over there. They are sinners. And they are unknown. Because we don't want to know their name. Because for what they did, I don't want to involve in that. But Jesus finding a new way, a new ride, a new route, a new opportunities. Meet the new people and come out with Jesus, you will have a new life. Jesus is here already. Before we came over here, Jesus is already here. For those who are thirsty, I will give you the water and you will never thirsty again. When a Samaritan woman came to draw water, Jesus said to her, will you give me a drink? I love Jesus. Never argue with a woman. Never put her down. Never seeing what she is doing. Never argue with them. But he want to encounter with the life of that woman. Arguing make it hard to encounter anybody with God. <clears throat> and a Samaritan woman says, saying, you are Jewish and I am Samaritan woman. How can you ask me for a drink? For Jews do not associate with Samaritan. That woman every day, every night is locked into their heart, to their mind. And this is my culture. I will say it because this is what I believe. And the culture fed here with all of them. Please do not argue with anybody you would like to encounter with Jesus. In our time, we encounter race, gender, workforce, color, status, societies, and churches. It goes divisive. We are suffered because of that. For two lines. On the book of discipline can cause division because we are arguing something we should not be arguing with that. Race is a man-made barrier. It is not with God. Jesus, you are Jewish and I am a Samaritan woman. That's not my Father and my fathers and my fathers told me, you are man, I am a woman. You are gay, I am a straight. 
It was white and brown. It was black. When you encounter an person, you are talking to a soul of that person. You are talking to a person who needs Jesus Christ. Don't let me preach today. We are all created in God's image. We are equally right. We create man's barrier, but God looking for a salvation to all of us. And Jesus answered, if you knew the gift of God, and who is that? Ask you for a drink. If you knew the gift of God, for God so loved the world that he sent his only, only one, only, only. I heard from what Baba say, my only daughter, losing the one he had nothing at all. But he rather nothing so he can live. And I will live. Salvation for all. If you knew the gift of God who asked you for a drink, he would ask him for living water. There's no need to argue about all of that. But gender or colors, what do you do, what I'm doing, what house you live or what house I live? What car you drive or what car I drive? It's a waste of time to all of us to do that. It goes divisive and split and angry. But it's very simple. Just tell them what Jesus did to your life. It is your story. When Jesus touched you, your life changed. Tell them. Say, the woman said, you have nothing to draw with and the well is deep. The woman is making all the reason for Jesus not to drink from the well. We all reason everything, everywhere reason. If you would like to encounter someone with Christ, there's no need for you to reason it, to argue with that. There's no need for you to study the Bible and find the heaviest word over there. I was blind, but now I see. I was lost, but now I found. If you encounter with anyone, tell what Jesus touching you. Tell them. All of a sudden, that Jesus changed the conversation. The water I will give you, you will never thirsty again. Can you go and tell your husband to come? That woman never hide anything. Says quickly, say. I have five husbands, I married five husbands, and the man I stay now is not my husband. I want you, look, listen, listen carefully to me. You know this woman? He been in prison for so many years. She had a stressful life. 
No doubt about this. He knew where to worship. He knew Jesus is Lord. He knew how to pray when they go to the mountain and the Jews go to Jerusalem to the temple. He knew everything. Which means this person kept the law. And this was the law. If I'm, I'll give you an example. If I am the Sumerian woman, it should be. Because it's no name. I can use, I can use that. I, if they be there. And I marry my first husband, and he died. The will need to be in the family, I will marry the second one. And he died, we didn't have children, I married another one. She married to a five brothers. They all died. She was locked in into the, the traditional, this is how you are. You're gonna marry one family. I am so tired married one family. One to five. Maybe the man who stay with him now respect him, love him. I am so tired of being in a one family for the most of my life. Listen carefully. This is the best part. That woman, that woman, yeah, she went to bring her husband. You know what? You know what? She bring not only her husband, but she bring the family. She bring the whole town. She bring the whole town. Let's go to Jesus. Let's encounter with Jesus. Person was in, in prison, married to a, one family for five generations. And now she, he's staying with another person who loves and respects her. It's a new thing for her to experience in their life. And Jesus never criticized her. She says, just go, just go and bring, bring it. <coughs> he went and brought the whole town. And you know what? This is the first woman evangelist ever wrote by John. Amen. Think about your life. As people look at you and people have told you, you are from Samaria, you are not perfect, you can't do this. There's no way for you to do it. And look at that, you married five times, and the man you're staying now, you are married with. Now, that woman is the first ever woman evangelist record in the Bible with John. 